Hello, welcome to today's lecture. Today we'll be talking about collection development. I'll be giving you a brief overview of this process. My name is Katrina Davis Kendrick. I'm assistant librarian and assistant professor at the University of South Carolina, Lancaster. You see my contact information at the bottom of the screen, katrina at mailbox.sc.edu. And there's my phone number as well, 803-313. 7061. As we move through this presentation, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me with your feedback. So what is collection development? Many people think it's just one aspect and that is usually collecting books or purchasing books. However, it's more than that. You see from this quick diagram that it's a continuing process. It can start anywhere in this process, but generally you want to start with knowing your collection, knowing your community, understanding who the learners are in your community. You also want to create policies and procedures to work with collecting and maintaining your uh, collection. You want to map your collection, see where the gaps are, what's overbalanced, what's underbalanced. And lots of people are, of course, concerned about budgeting and planning, i.e. planning for growth, planning for attrition, and then of course there's the selecting of materials which involves deciding what books are, and media and other resources are going to come into your collection. Collection maintenance of course um, that includes not only what goes into your collection but what goes out, how are you going to be doing shelf reading, shelf lists, things like that. So think about this as a cohesive non-ending process. Some of these things happen uh, at the same time, some of these things happen in concert with your acquisitions team. Um, so you want to be aware of that. Peggy Johnson talks about some organizational models of collection development in her book, Fundamentals of Collection Development and Management. And she talks about two particular organizational models. The first one is a functional model where collection development happens in a single department or division. The other model that you might see or hear about is geographic or client-based um, organizational models and that is when collection development happens within a group within a group created for a particular user group or a location. In my experience I've not seen one or the other However, I have seen that um, lots of collection development organizational models are a hybrid of these two, or they're on a large continuum, a long continuum of these two. At um, a large institution where I previously worked, it happened in the liaison group. There, was a, there were a group of subject specialists, and they were the ones who um, did collection development for their subject areas. Where I am now at a small institution, I am the one, and another librarian, we collect for a myriad, almost every program that we have here at our institution, we collect items, um, books, media, electronic resources. We go out and we look for those things um, and see what we can add to our collection and work in concert with our main campus, which is about an hour away to determine what we what we would like to purchase and, and um, or input into our collection. We also, um, in terms of collection maintenance, we determine what goes out of our collection as well, what's going to be deassessed. So think about these organizational models um, as hybrid. I, you, it's going to be very rare that you'll see just a functional model or just a geographic or a client-based model when you're looking at a, how um, collection development happens in the real world in an academic institution or any library for that matter. A large part of collection development, of course, is collection building, and that requires lots of uh, planning and input from a myriad of groups. First of all, you want to look at the leadership of the administrator who is running the library. You want to make sure that the administrator or the library director or the dean of the library has a philosophy for collection development. Um, you want to make sure that we have knowledgeable librarians working who know what the different sources are for their field in order to locate and identify um, resources for your collection and be able to determine the myriad concerns that go along with identifying items for selection. So licensing, copyright, um, different formats uh, require different um, aspects of knowledge and understanding in order to purchase items. And likewise, on the, uh, on the back end, understanding what is still useful when we're thinking about 
withdrawing items from our collection, understanding what is still useful, what is considered obsolete in a field, in a certain field. So you want librarians, uh, information professionals who are aware of the myriad ways in which they can determine what's going to go into a collection, what needs to stay in a collection. You also want to know about technology platforms. You'll hear a lot about an ILS or an integrated library system. That's basically the top, the technology platform that you use to check for circulation functions, cataloging functions, um, acquisitions functions. And a lot of ILSs have tools and reporting functions that will allow you to determine things like what does a certain area of your collection look like? How many books are in that collection? If you want to sub if you want to have sub um, areas, how many books are in this area of the literature portion of your collection? How many books do you have on a, um, according to a cert certain subject heading, for instance? So you want to make sure that you have reliable technology platforms in order to understand what's going on in your collection. For instance, we just did an age of collection uh, report and that determined how old our collection is. That's something that you want to be able to find out as you look to see where are the areas that need to be more current and where are where are we okay in terms of currency for instance you also want to be thinking about working with your users you want them to be engaged and educated this is particularly important in my case at a small academic institution my users are my students faculty and staff and in particular I rely on my faculty members to help me grow my collection while I know how to find information, I may not know all the areas to find information, particularly when it comes to specific areas of or disciplines. So while I'm highly engaged in humanities information because of my own background, I may need help um, determining what's most recent in areas of nursing, medicine, some sciences and things like that. My faculty members know the most recent items that they know and the most popular items of use for their fields and so I need their help and input and guidance a little bit understanding where those items where I can find those items and um, if they're able to be assessed for our and usable by our students in public libraries you want your users to be engaged as well because they're the learners in your community and so while you may understand that there's a state consortium of databases you're having an engaged user base will they may come to you and say did you know about this resource? I'm taking a course at a local community college. I'm taking um, a class at the local uh, community space. And did you know that this resource exists? So you want to have engaged and educated library users. Um, this is not only important for collection build, co collection building, but in terms of collection maintenance. You might hear a lot of times in a lot of communities, sometimes with the public library, users may be concerned or worried when the library does a large reading project and so this is the opportunity for you to make sure you have educated library users so they understand that collection development is not only purchasing items being able to purchase and select items but recognizing that we need to make room for new items that some items are worn and torn um, some items need to be um, go out of date and so this is an opportunity for you to educate your users about how that process works and what are those different activities that we have to do in order to have a, a great library or a library that's functional for everyone who uses it. In this way, you have those supportive communities that know how the library works and are more apt to participate in and help you build your collection and use the collection that you have built for them. When we look at collection maintenance you want to be thinking about the following items first off is assessment and I talked a little bit about this when I mentioned those integrated library systems and the reports that they can do but you definitely want to know what is in your collection how is it being used what's the most what is being underutilized and then from there you can decide is it is a particular area being underutilized because of interest or maybe people don't know you have books in those collections and so you can work in concert with your outreach librarian to maybe um, see how you can make items more used in your collection. You also want to be thinking about material selection that is definitely a part of collection maintenance because it determines <clears throat> what kind of books you're going to purchase and not just books but um, resources, electronic resources, databases, that's called electronic resource management. You'll hear a lot about that in those types of um, positions. 
part and parcel of maintaining a collection is something that people don't think about often and that is maintaining order it's the task that people um, may overlook but they exist and they are very very important to collection maintenance things like shelf reading creating shelf lists making sure that items that are missing are actually missing doing a um, doing what's called KP finding books and making sure they're put back on the shelves in a timely manner making sure that books that circulate that come back in are put back on the shelf within a certain time period um, so you want to make sure you have um, enough staff to be able to make sure that books go back on the shelf in a timely manner Collection maintenance is also thinking about anticipating areas of growth in your collection and attrition in your collection. So you want to be able to see how many ranges may, may we need in the future. Um, what may be leaving us in the future? For instance, um, lots of librarians and information professionals are now thinking about the, the um, need for, is there a need for a print reference collection? That's an area that lots of libraries are are um, doing away with because you can find lots of information, um, go to quick information, what we call quick reference information, in different formats, usually um, in on on the internet, really. So people are really determining how best to use that space as those um, as certain sections or certain areas and disciplines um, grow and uh, are um, are um, and decrease. You also want to be thinking about withdrawals, and we talked about that a few moments ago, but it is definitely a part of collection maintenance, and um, it goes in kind of in concert with attrition, what needs to be going out, and for what reasons should they leave, should those items be assessed, deassessed from your collection. I want to turn briefly to policies and creating a collection development policy. When you look through different policies, there are uh, similarities and differences, and I want to focus on the what you want to make sure you have in a collection development policy. You want to make sure that you are telling your users how you allocate funds. When you get your budget, your yearly budget, your yearly fiscal budget, how are you determining what portion of your funds go to print resources, uh, media resources, electronic resources, and what are your rationales for why those allocations are such as they are. In um, an academic library, are you going to allocate those funds by discipline, and how are you going to do that in a way that's uh, um, ethical and fair as possible? You also want to be thinking about your, your philosophy of collection development. Who are you collecting for and why, and what is the purpose of your collection? Because again, that's going to help you determine the parameters for choosing your materials and of course it follows your allocation of your funds so how are you going to choose those materials how often are you choosing materials are you using certain um, tools to use those materials are you how much is how much are, how much is standing order are you gonna are you gonna um, do um, is are you gonna go by program is is the programs or degrees or outreach or um, what types of activities determine how you choose your materials. If the library gets donations, how are they going to be handled when those donations come in? You want to be able to make sure that your users know that. You also want to give an overview of each collection and why it's included in your library. And you want to talk about how your materials are going to be maintained. Additionally, you want to talk about how materials are chosen for withdrawals, what are those parameters. And you want to be sure that you include some language or a process or a procedure about challenges to materials, intellectual freedom challenges to materials. What happens if someone wants something to be removed from your collection because they don't like something in it? Um, or vice versa, uh, how do you determine how you, if you want something, to, if someone wants something to be added and it's currently not added and it may be, um, it may be something that your community is concerned about. So be sure you have something about responses to intellectual freedom of, for materials as, as far as that's concerned. I'm going to leave you with a list of helpful links. The American Library Association is always a great place to start. And some specialized users groups include the Reference and User Asso Services Associations. They have a um, special group for collection development. And there's also a great article called The Practical Librarian's Guide to Collection Development. It was published in American Libraries um, last year. And another user group that might be helpful to you is the Association for Library Collections and Technical Services. That's all I have for this lecture. If you have any questions or feedback, 
please feel free to contact me. Thanks for listening.